Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be working on this painting today of a pumpkin and a couple of sunflowers using a few different tools that I'll talk about in just a minute. So if you want to gather your supplies, your canvas, your paint and everything, then we're going to jump right in and get going on this nice fun uh, autumn painting. So these are the colors that you're going to be using today. We're going to be using cadmium red, this is a medium hue, cadmium yellow, medium hue, titanium white, Naples yellow hue, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of ultramarine and a little bit of cerulean blue. So those are the colors we're going to be using. Now you can see here on my canvas that it already has a layer of this Naples yellow on it. You don't have to do that. This is just something that I like to do in the background of painting sometimes, especially if they're going to be using similar colors because it brings out the warmth uh, in those colors if I'm using, you know, reds and yellows and oranges. So this is just called a colored ground. And it's just one layer of Naples yellow. If you want to do that, you can do that. You can leave it white if you want to as well. These are the tools that I'm using today, a pencil, and I just have a couple of, um, of these palette knives. These were actually my grandmother's palette knives. And um, so we're gonna be using palette knives. You can use a paintbrush if you want to. If you don't have a palette knife, that's totally fine. Paintbrushes work great for this too. But I wanted to show you how to use a palette knife to get these techniques. And I'll, I'll bring in a brush at some point too to kind of show you how you can use either one of them. And then of course I have water. I've got a paper towel and I've got my, um, paper, my paper plate here that I'm using as my palette. So I need to start out by sketching in my pumpkin and my flowers. And so what I want to do is I want it to fill a good amount of this space here on my canvas. So I'm going to start just by sketching in a big about, I want to fill about two thirds of it with this pumpkin. So I'm going to start about a third of the way, maybe a little uh, more than a third of the way down and just sketch in a big, kind of oval really. It's not really a circle. It's going to be a big oval shape. I don't want to go right up to the edge. I want to go a little bit inside of that. Um, if you have extra pencil lines like this, that's okay. We'll, we'll paint right over them. So maybe I don't want that little bit there. This is going to be sort of my pumpkin shape here. And um, I'm actually going to bring it down just a little bit further. There we go. That's good. And the stem of my pumpkin is going to be right in this area here. So um, I'm just going to kind of play around with the shape a little bit. This is going to, the stem of the pumpkin is going to go wherever the lines that come down, you know, in your pumpkin like this are. Uh, and so I'm going to have these uh, points on the stem. They're going to follow the um, my pumpkin like this. I like to have kind of a big uh, end to my stem here. Actually, I'm going to bring that in like that. And then this is going to be... Now, a lot of this will get painted over and then redrawn in later, but I just want to have this kind of starting here. I am going to erase this so that you can see a little clearer. I didn't... I'm not going to use that line there. And then this this can kind of come out like that. So now I've got my basic pumpkin shape. You can pause it, take the time you need to do that. Um, you know, if you have a pumpkin in front of you, that can be helpful too to kind of get a better idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, and then we'll, we will um, do more with this once we actually get into the painting. But I want to have my basic pumpkin shape sketched out here. Below that, I'm going to have a couple of sunflowers. And um, so I'm going to have one that's going to be maybe a little bit left of center. So if I, my center is about here, just to the left of that. Now, one thing that um, often uh, new artists especially will do is go too small. They won't use the whole page or the whole canvas or whatever it is that they're working on. So make sure that you're really going big with this. If you start out small, you know, grab an eraser and then go bigger. Um, so I have maybe a little, I have maybe three quarters of an inch on either side here. That's pretty much all you want on this on 
the sides of this. I want it to be pretty big to fill my canvas, whatever size your canvas is. Um, try to get it so it really fills it up so you don't have this little tiny pumpkin in the middle of a big, you know, page here, paper, um, canvas here. And the same thing goes with the, the sunflowers. I'm going to have the middles of the sunflowers will be kind of sketched in here and here. So I've got one just to the left of center and then just kind of up in the corner just a little bit. And those are just, those are just the, um, the centers of my sunflowers. I'm not going to bother with all of the petals right now because those are going to come last. I'm going to be painting my pumpkin behind them first. I don't want to spend a lot of time drawing those in right now just to have them painted over. So I'm just going to sketch in the centers so I know about where they're going to be. And then they're going to have some stems and things like that. But that is just a placeholder for me. And then I'm going to be working on the background first. And then I'll move forward and do the pumpkin and then the flowers last. So I always work back to front. Whatever's furthest back I do first middle ground, foreground. So I just want to have those as placeholders and then we'll do more details on that later. But I'm going to just kind of go with this as my initial sketch and then we'll start working in the background and moving our, our way forward. So for this background, I'm going to start with my burnt umber and I'm also going to use some titanium white. I'm just going to put some here, maybe eh, about that much. Um, and it, we're going to just do sort of a vague background. Uh, it could be kind of a background where it, it looks a little bit like maybe the pumpkin is, you know, sitting in the earth. It's got around some dirt. So we're just going to use these natural colors. And I'm just going to use a little touch of this Naples yellow as well. So I'm just going to have these three colors, just a little bit of this. We will be using a little bit more of that later. But for now, I'm just going to have a little bit of these three colors here on my palette. And then I'm going to use my palette knife. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to work right. I'm not going to really mix a lot on my palette for this part. I'm going to take a little bit of the white and I'm going to just take a little bit of that brown. So I have a little bit of both of these here on my palette knife. And I'm going to come into the background here. And I'm just going to start kind of using the palette knife to apply some texture here with my white and my my brown here. And it doesn't have to be anything fabulous or beautiful, but I wanted to start to cover some of this area and I'm letting some of this yellow ochre peek through too. And you can use different sizes. Um, I'm starting out with this smaller one and you can do larger strokes like I did there. You can do smaller strokes like I'm doing here and you will get some different, um, you know, have some different textures that will pop up. If you put your palette knife down and lift like this, if you just put it straight on there and lift, you can get some really fun uh, textures there. And I'll bring this a little closer so you can see that texture from doing that. Um, so there are a lot of different things you can do with a palette knife. And I can bring a little bit of my yellow ochre into this as well. And it just warms it up a little bit. Um, this brown is a nice earthy brown, um, but white is a very cool color. So sometimes white can make something that is normally very earthy and warm feeling, it can make it feel a little bit less so. So that's why it's nice to bring in a little bit of your yellow here with this, just to kind of warm it up. Um, and you can have parts of it that are darker and parts of it that are lighter. Now, when we get to the bottom here, down here, it is going to be um, darker. We are going to have um, some shadows down there. So you don't want to go too dark up at the top. Uh, you want to stay, you know, fairly light up here and then just play around with your textures. Now, like I was saying, you can do the same thing with a brush. If you um, don't have a palette knife, uh, I can grab a brush. I have a round brush here. I got a flat brush here. Either one, um, you can do the, a similar thing where you're just bringing the brush in and just doing some textures like this. And just to give us something in the background. Now, I don't want it to be too busy. I want the focus to be on the pumpkin. So if I find that it, you know, it's getting a little bit, getting to be a little bit too much, then I might come back in here. And I can kind of smooth some of that out and 
even it out. It's just kind of a fun chance to just play, to play with color, to play with textures, uh, play with your paint a little bit. You know, I don't think adults are allowed to just kind of play that, that much. So have some fun with this part of your painting and just let it be a very, you know, textured, uh, background that doesn't have to be anything in particular uh, because what we're going to be doing in the foreground is going to be uh, you know the focus so this is just a nice you know kind of colored background to have so I'm going to keep going on this I'll speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to sit and watch me do this step by step um, and then we're, we're gonna I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit more once we get to the bottom So now as we get closer to the bottom down here, I want to start adding a little bit more of the burnt umber in to make it look more shadowy down here at the bottom, in this bottom right corner. And I can still have some white mixed in, but I want a little bit more of my brown. And actually I'm gonna need to put a little bit more on my palette. Um, and I'm also changing the texture just a little bit so that I can have a variety. I've got this, different kind of texture up here, and then I'm making it a little bit, uh, you know, more kind of smooth. Now, some of this is gonna get covered up right here by the flowers, so I'm not too concerned with this area right around the pumpkin, but um, I do wanna come out here. Another thing too to um, discuss is if you have, you know, sides, you can always paint all the way along the sides if you want to, or you can leave them, I'll often leave them and then paint uh, paint them one co solid color afterwards. That way I don't have to worry about the sides while I'm painting. But, um, so I'm coming right up here to my edges though with this, the darker, you know, just the brown with a little bit less white mixed in. And um, altering my texture just a little bit. And again, this is something you can do with a paintbrush as well if you don't have a palette knife. And you can also, you know, try using a plastic uh, knife or a plastic spoon. Um, sometimes those can uh, work pretty well as a palette knife if you have one that, you know, it's better if it's a little bit flexible. You don't want something that's too uh, inflexible or it'll be hard to get uh, the textures that you want. But you can play around with it and, um, you know, I'm going to leave a little gap there because that's right where the flower is going to be later. But I've got this nice, uh, you know, the darker texture here in the corner. And, uh, you know, sort of this is where my, my shadows would be and it's lighter up there. So I would consider this background pretty much finished. I'll try to move it so you can see it without the reflection on it. Uh, and then you can always come back and fix things later, change things later. Um, if you painted over the pumpkin, that's fine. We're going to be painting out. That's why we do back to front. Um, and then we're going to come back into it in just a minute. We're going to let it dry for a few minutes because the background is very wet right now. You could take a hairdryer to it or a fan or whatever you want and then get it to dry and then we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll start talking about the pumpkin itself. Okay, so this is mostly dry around where the pumpkin is. It might be a little bit wet out here still, but that's okay. I just really want it to be dry just right around the edge of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna come in, I put some colors here on my paper palette. I've got a little bit more uh, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow, medium, cadmium red medium, a little bit of um, alizarin crimson, and a touch of burnt umber. Um, and I still have a little bit of white over here from when I was working on the background. So I want to start to paint in the pumpkin itself now. And um, I'm going to do the same thing I did before with using my palette knives. Um, but again, you can use brushes if you don't have palette knives or if you just prefer brushes. Um, if you have never used palette knives before and you have access to one, I highly recommend giving it a try just because it is a really fun way to, to paint. So um, now I want to work on my pumpkin here using these colors. And an interesting thing about um, yellows is it's very transparent. So you can see I went over that pencil line and you can still see it really clearly underneath it. So yellow is very um, transparent, especially cadmium yellow. Naples yellow 
is much more opaque. And so if I go over top of that, it, it's much, uh, it covers much better. So that's part of the reason I like to use a little bit of both of those. Because cadmium yellow is so transparent, um, it, you know, it takes a little bit more to cover pencil lines. So I'm going to come, I'm just actually putting some of my yellows right onto my pumpkin, kind of scraping it on there a little bit. And I'm going to come in with my cadmium red. Cadmium red is a very orangey red, so it's already biased towards yellow, which makes it a good mix for um, what we're going to be doing here. So it's kind of fun. I like to just get a little bit of color into my background um, before I start painting everything else on, because then I have something to kind of work up from. And so you can kind of I'm just kind of scraping some of this across here and giving um, a little room to start with. Now, um, I'm going to slide some of my cadmium yellow over and a little bit of my yellow ochre. And then I actually already have some cadmium red on my palette knife um, from just now. So mixing in these colors to get start to get an orange color. I'm going to take a touch more cadmium red. So I'm going to have a couple of different oranges here. I'm going to have my more yellowy color. I'm going to have a slightly more red orange. And then I have the colors themselves. So you can see here I've got a nice couple of mixtures here. I'm actually going to switch to this palette knife because this one has this angle to it. It can be a little bit easier to work with. This one is just a flat one. So um, so it's nice to have a little angle here when I'm actually getting into the painting. So I'm going to take my uh, orange here and I'm just going to start kind of uh, painting it on or, you know, I guess, I mean, it's, it's still painting with a palette knife, but <laughs> uh, it just feels weird saying painting. And coming in here and putting this color down. The thing with working with palette knives is that because your paint is thicker, than it is when you're working with just a brush. Um, it, it can take a little longer to dry, but that's okay. Um, you know, you can just grab a hairdryer or a fan and uh, it'll help it to dry a little bit quicker. I'm gonna come in here and just kind of paint this, this section in over here a little bit. And I'm gonna take a touch of my burnt umber here. And in this, where it kind of has that little valley here. I'm gonna start putting some of that in this section. And then I'm gonna come back in. I gotta mix a little bit more of my orange here. And then come back in here with this. A little bit of yellow. And we'll do another layer on top of this once this is a little bit more dry. This is our, our kind of our first coat. And we're just going to come in here and now again this is where my um, sunflower is so i can you know paint over that or not but like i said it's very transparent still so i'll be able to kind of see where that is and i'm going to come back in with my um, burnt umber and just kind of keep going back and forth between the two the nice thing about painting this way is it's very loose um, i have a tendency when i paint i really like to paint very realistically this gives me a chance to step away from that and just kind of have some fun with color, have some fun just putting some paint down on the canvas and not worrying so much about it being perfect. Um, and I can just go back and forth and play with it a little bit. And if I get, you know, too much of one color in one place, I can always come back once it's dry and, you know, revisit that, paint over it and, you know, change it as I see fit. So I'm just going to keep going with this and painting um, along here and you can go right back over top of it in the end it's going to be much more textured this is our base layer to build up from so i'm going to um, keep working on this and you know continue to go across here and then we went with um i'm going to go a little bit lighter as i go up i'm going to have my highlights last i have my darker my darker colors down first and then my lighter colors on top um, if you're painting with watercolors you do the opposite you do your um, you do your darkest colors last, but with acrylic paints, you do your, and, and with oil paints, you do your darker colors first, your lighter colors last. So I'm going to put this layer of, um, 
kind of medium and darker colors down now, and then we'll add highlights to it in just a minute. So I've got this first layer of color down here and it's very wet so I'm going to let it dry for a little while and then we'll come back in and start to add highlights and work on the stem and the other parts. So for now I just need to let this part dry so grab your hair dryer or your fan and or just step away for a little while and we're going to get this uh, to dry for a little bit. Okay so this is mostly dry now there are a few spots that might be a little bit wet but I've put it in front of the fan, let it dry for a little while, and I'm going to come back in, like I mentioned before, I want to do my highlights last. So I've done some of these kind of medium and dark tones, and I want to come back in here with some of my lighter tones. So I'm going to use some of these same colors that I was using before, the um, cadmium yellow, the naples yellow, and my um, cadmium red, and mix together a very, very light orange here. You can see how much lighter it is than what I've had on there so far. So I'm going to have some of that light orange and I want to come in here and I want to use the textures that have already been built up here and the textures of my um, palette knife to create some highlights here. So I'm going to just come in and get some nice light textures, leaving some of that uh, orange underneath. I really want that to show. And so I'm just bringing this and kind of dragging it across the top here. Now, if you're using a paintbrush, you can use a larger paintbrush to get a similar effect and just be very light with your touch so that you're picking up any textures that you have built up already. And you can really see that here, some of those textures that come through. And that's going to be more my sort of medium light tone here. And I'm going to add some lighter tones to it as well. And you can go over top, you can, um, you know, blend over some of this. And then I'm going to come over top of that with some of my uh, Naples yellow to get the lighter highlights, especially on the top of the pumpkin. I'm not going to have as many of those on the bottom because, of course, it's going to be have some shadows down there. But I want to have some of these lighter yellows that are up here at the top of my pumpkin to really kind of make it pop out a little bit, give it a little bit more of a roundness to it. And trying to follow these different sections of the pumpkin so that I've got uh, a little bit of highlights in each, each different section and then kind of carrying down into parts of the pumpkin and then letting it kind of peter out at the bottom into that, those darker tones that I have down there. And you can play around with this, um, you know, take a step back, take a look at it, see if there's anything else you want to do. You can always come back in and add, you know, a little bit more of a shadow if you need to. If you painted over it and you don't like it, or if you accidentally went too light, you can, you know, let it dry and then uh, pick, uh, pick it back up and, you know, come back in and do a little bit of a shadow if you need to. And you can just, it's kind of, you know, a, a point to just... Um, take a look at it. Don't overpaint. Don't, you know, take too long. People always ask, when do I know if I'm finished? And it's often after you've already done something and realized, oh, I should have stopped five minutes ago. So take a step back, take a look at your painting, see what you think. If you, you know, went too light and you feel like, oh my gosh, this is really way too light. Um, then you can come back in with a little bit of your darker orange and just, you know, uh, cover some of that light area here. And then you can um, you know, it's kind of a back and forth, just playing around with the colors to see to, until you get to a point where you like it. And sometimes, too, it's a matter of coming back a day later with fresh eyes and going, okay, this is what I need to do now. I really need to, you know, come back in here, maybe fix this spot. So sometimes it takes a couple days for you to really know if it's done. Um, and, and it's nice to save a little bit of paint so that if you do want to change something later, you can always come back and fix that. So, the pumpkin itself, you know, I, I, I'm uh, pleased with at this point. So what I want to do, I'm going to uh, clean off my palette knife here. And um, I want to come in and start working on the stem of the pumpkin. 
And stems, it's funny because when I look at pumpkins, some people paint them green, some people paint them uh, brown. And so you can you can do uh, whatever colors you think you know you want to do. But I'm going to come in here with oops, the wrong blue. I'm going to come in here with a little bit of my um, cerulean blue. And whoop, just got my little dried out thing there. A little bit of my cerulean blue, and um, I've already got some brown here and some yellow. And I'm going to take a little bit of of my burnt umber, my cerulean blue. I'm going to mix these. I'll try to mix them here so you can see a little better. And I'm going to take a little bit of my Naples yellow. So I have kind of a greenish brown color here that I'm going to start with. And again, you know, we're going to go light to dark. Or excuse me, sorry, dark to light, opposite. And um, I'm going to come in here and just pop this kind of a grayish brown color in and it's going to be kind of similar to what we did with the pumpkin where you put a darker color in let that dry for a little while and then uh, we'll come back into this in a little bit with some lighter colors to kind of fill it out so if you remember I painted over some of this but you know the stem kind of uh, comes into each little um, valley kind of area here paint across here. Now this is smaller areas can sometimes get a little tricky with a palette knife, but not impossible. You can always just use the very tip of the palette knife. And then I'm going to come in here and just paint that in. So that's kind of my first layer here. And I'm, I'm actually going to kind of scrape a little bit of this up so it's not quite so thick because I want it to dry a little bit more quickly. Um, now I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to take a brush for this next part because it's a little bit easier and I'm going to take a little bit more of my burnt umber and I'm going to work here on my uh, the center of my flowers down here and uh, I'm going to start out with just just straight burnt umber get to get the colors into these spaces here. And then I'm going to come back into them uh, with just a touch of my yellow. So it gives it a little bit of variety, a little bit of texture. So it's not just straight brown. And again over here, because again, that Naples yellow is it, it does cover a little bit better. And it gives me a little bit more to work with here. So it's not just, like I said, a, a, you know, dark brown here in the middle. I have a little something to work from. And then, because then off of here, we're going to be creating our, uh, all of our flower petals and the stems and leaves and things like that. So I want those to dry. I don't want to come back in and do the petals yet. So um, while those are drying, I'm going to take a little bit, rinsing out my brush here, and I'm going to take um, a little bit of my let's swoop around here, and I'm going to take some of my ultramarine blue. Now, ultramarine is biased towards red and um, purple, so it makes them more of a purpley color. That's why I want to do a little bit of cerulean too, which is biased towards yellow. So it's going to have we have a little bit of variety with our greens. Um, the reason I don't use a tube green for this is just because I think that tube greens can get kind of stagnant. Um, if you're mixing your own greens, then it creates much a much more interesting composition because you have the colors that are blending together that can create a lot of um, texture and interest here where you wouldn't get that if you just had a color straight out of a tube. So I'm mixing here some of my cadmium yellow with my cerulean and then some of my cadmium yellow with my ultramarine. So I want to have a couple of different greens here. The ultramarine is going to make more of a khaki green, an earthy kind of green. Cerulean make more of a sort of a neon green. So I want to have a couple of different greens here. And I can start to just lay in 
And again, these are going to be very trans very transparent because of the yellows. That's why I want to do a couple of layers. And I'm going to just start to lay in what will be my um, leaves and stems for these flowers. And I'm going to come right off the canvas for this part. And uh, you can, you know, take the time to sketch these in first. Um, I like to just kind of come in and play around with adding these colors. These colors and I'm going to have a few over here. I want to have a couple of layers of this so these thinner layers will get covered again and I'll be able to um, add a little bit more um, to cover up some of the brown here at the bottom. But it's also nice to have some of that peeking through because uh, sometimes leaves and stems can be fairly transparent uh, in nature and, they'll, and some of that color will show through and will affect the way that you see it. So I'm going to have these colors popped in right here and then um, I'm going to let all of this dry a little bit here so that I can come back in and do the finishing touches here on the stem and then uh, work down here. On the stem, one of the things that I think is kind of fun, um, I really always try to find pumpkins that have this. I like it when there's a little curly cue off of it. So I'm gonna take some of this color that I mixed here and I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow into it because I wanna brighten it up just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna put some of my yellow, um, Naples yellow in it as well, because it, again, it's more opaque and it will give me a little bit more to work with here a little touch of cerulean to brighten it up a bit. Now I'm going to take, I have a lot of paint here in my flat brush. I'm going to take this and coming off of the edge here, I'm just going to kind of bring it around and add a little too much paint there. Make sure I don't leave my hand in wet paint. And this is something that you don't have to include if you don't want to, but I just, like I said, I think it's kind of fun when pumpkins have that little curly cue. Just coming off like that. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry about that. Uh, and then again, I can add more to that later. And I can use some of this color, even though this is still a little bit wet. I can come in here, just, you know, kind of drag this across the top here. While that's still a little bit wet, blends it in a little bit. And then I'm going to let this sit and dry for a little while. So now that this has mostly dried, I want to come back in and do a little bit more here on the stem as well as start to bring in the um, petals on my flowers. So. Again, you can do this with a paintbrush or with um, a palette knife. Either way works just fine. And I need uh, some more of my cadmium yellow. And again, I'm going to be using my Naples yellow to kind of give it uh, a little bit more uh, of a, an opaque feel to it. And white can also do that too. White will White is an opaque color, technically, and so you can use that as well. So I'm just going to take some of my... Um, cadmium yellow, some of my Naples yellow, and coming off of my, um, my the center of my flower here, I'm just going to start um, putting some of my flower petals. And I'm going to have some coming this way, and then I'm going to have some that will come off this way, but also some that are going to cover part of the center of my flower. And this is just a flat brush that I'm using here for this. It's nice, and uh, it's, it, you know, it gets those points for you on the one one side, and then you can get the thicker parts on the other side. So um, I will end up doing multiple layers of this, but that's just my first layer here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this one, starting over here. I'm gonna make these a little bit longer. And I will have some that will come over like this. Because I want there to be multiple layers of petals, just as there would be on the actual flower. So I have this first layer here, and then I'll do a second layer uh, once this dries. 
And I'm going to come back in here too because I want to um, add a little bit more color here to my uh, the stems and leaves on my flowers. So I'm going to mix a little bit more of my greens up here. A little too much. So then I can kind of come in, start to fill this out a little bit more. And it will cover a little bit better this time because I've got that first layer underneath it. And then I'm going to be filling some of this in with um, some of my flower petals. And then some of this will just be my uh, the greenery here. So again, you can add as much you know, of this as you want to. It could be really full down here. You can have it be a little more sparse, but it makes for a nice contrast. We have some of this green down here, and then we'll have some of that green up here at the on the stem as well. And um, letting some of these colors underneath pop through, the pumpkin colors, etc. And then um, put a little one right there. And I'm going to come up here again on my stem, and I want to have a highlight area here. I'm just using some of the same greens from down here at the bottom. And a little bit of my um, burnt umber here. Because I want to give it a little bit of a, you know, a 3D pop. This is a good chance to kind of cover if you had some areas that didn't quite cover before. Um, you can use this as an opportunity to give you a little bit better coverage. You can come back into your uh, the little spiral here and get a little bit of the excess paint off. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of this green and brown mixture just so it doesn't look quite so flat. And I can make it look a little bit more 3D just by coming back into it and adding a little bit of a darker color underneath. And you can use a smaller brush for this too if you want. Um, so I've got nice coverage here on my stem. And I think that looks pretty good. I want to blend that just so it looks a little bit more like it's part of it. There we go. Now, down here, I do have a lot of this green that's very similar in tone. If you kind of squint at it, it doesn't have a lot of um, three, you know, of a 3D quality to it. So I'm going to come back in with some of my brown here. I've got some green left and some, uh, you know, mixed onto my brush still. And you can bring some of that down here if you want to. And I'm going to come back in, just create some shadows on some of these. I don't want to go too dark. I don't want it to look like the background, but I want to have a little bit more of a 3D look with my leaves. And I can do that both by adding shadows, but also by adding uh, some highlights with maybe my yellow here. So once I've got some shadows in there, oh, and then I have my brush falling apart. I'm going to switch to my, I was going to switch my palette knife anyway. Uh, I'm going to use a little bit of my yellows here and just come right on top of my um, leaves and things and add some yellow just to give it a little bit more of a, again, I've got my middle tones, I've got my highlights, I've got my shadows, and I can come right in here and add add all those in here. So it, it gives, gives me a little bit more of a three-dimensional look to it. And I can do something else, something similar up here. And you can use a little bit of white as well just so it's not just yellow. We can get a little bit of a highlight up here just to make that pop out a little bit more. I'm going to let this dry one more time and come back in and do some finishing touches on the flower petals and just see if there's anything else that I feel like I really want to do on the pumpkin itself. All right, so this is uh, pretty dry now. So I'm going to come back in and do some finishing touches on the flower petals and anywhere else that we think we might need um, to, you know, put any touch-ups or any fix any little details. Um, so I'm going to use my my flat brush again with my uh, Naples yellow and my cadmium yellow medium, and just going to come back in. I want to fill this in just a little bit more with my um, petals, 
and you can uh, take a little bit of white too to help it kind of you know some of the petals will pop a little bit more so that you don't just have the um, the yellow ones but you're going to have some some brighter petals as well and you know i'm putting the paint on kind of thick here so uh, it'll cover pretty well i'm going to fill in a few more petals down in here and um, come back in and you can you know put it as many as you want have some covering in this area too and you can even put a little bit of your orange in a, a, um, a few little spots uh, for some sort of shadow areas and just to kind of give it a little bit more of a um, natural look so it's not just you know like it's paint straight out of a tube you want it to look a little bit more natural than that so I've got lots of paint here on my brush and just coming back in and kind of filling out uh, some of this area here adding in some more flower petals and really there could be a hint of you know maybe there are some flowers behind that we're not seeing so we might see some extra flower petals that uh, are filling in this area here because maybe we don't see the full flower but we just see parts of the petals of those flowers so it might not just be these two could be a couple more you know back behind them and um, just to fill out this area a little bit more there we go and again at this point you can come in and you know if you want a little bit more of a maybe a highlight here or there on your pumpkin or if you just want to touch up other areas you can but I think you know for me I'm pretty happy with how this looks uh, I'm gonna let this dry come back look at it again tomorrow decide if I want to add anything else to it but really I think that I'm at a point where um, you know I'm pretty happy with it you know you can always just keep playing adding some more little you know I just took a little bit of my brown you can add a little bit more of a you know shadow here and there with the brown if you want to um, you know areas where I painted over the center maybe I didn't want that quite as covered I can come in and you know do a little bit more there um, but it's, you know, it's kind of fun at this point. Just play around with it. See what you, uh, want to do. If you want to add more to it, if you want to, um, you know, make it look any different, you can. And again, like I said, you can come back in a day or two and, uh, you know, see if there's anything else that you want to fix or change or, you know, whatever about it. But just be sure to, you know, try not to overwork it. Try to keep it, you know, so that it's, you don't have too much more paint in this or else it's going to get harder and harder and you're going to just, you know, end up dissatisfied with it if you overwork it so let it sit for a little while let it dry and take a look at it and then you're all done uh, thanks so much for joining me again and i hope you enjoyed this painting and please let me know if you have any questions and i hope to see you again